When it comes to electric vehicles, most consumers understand that they're quick. And when I say quick, I mean quick in a straight line. However, as an enthusiast, going fast in one direction is only part of the equation, which is why for 2025, the crazy folks over at Hyundai's Performance N division have essentially crafted an electric hot hatch for driving enthusiasts. Because what they've done here is they've taken the already excellent Hyundai Ioniq 5 and transformed it by doubling the horsepower, upgrading the suspension, brakes, steering, and giving it uh, giving it a look on the outside that screams, I want to have fun on a racetrack. So today we're actually out here at a racetrack. We're at Weather, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca because we're going to take the Ionic 5N out on the track and on the street. And the big question I want to answer, if you guys are an enthusiast looking for an electric vehicle that's actually going to put a huge smile on your face, how does the brand new 2025 Ionic 5N stack up? Stay tuned to find out. So before we go over the exterior styling changes for the N version of the Ionic 5, I thought I'd pop the hood and remind you guys what's underneath here. Now, the standard Ionic 5 actually does have a small frunk. However, for the N, you guys, you can see Hyundai had to delete it to make space for a lot more power, courtesy of some new electric motors. Now underneath the hood of this Ionic 5N, what you're gonna find is essentially dual electric motors as standard. However, unlike the regular Ionic 5 Limited, for example, which also can, you can get with dual electric motors, the power has, has been ramped up significantly. So in the regular Ionic 5, you have up to 320 horsepower, 446 pound-feet of torque. In this model here, you essentially literally get double the power. Now, 601 horsepower is gonna be available 24 seven. If you use the NGB button, which is their overboost feature or launch control, it'll increase the power to 641 for up to 10 seconds and torque is either 545 or 568 when you have it in the overboost function. So that power figure really puts the Ionic 5N at the top of the class. This actually has more horsepower than the Mustang Mach-E GT Performance, a Model 3 and Model Y Performance, and the EV6 GT, this car's platform mate. It all goes out through a one-speed reduction gear transmission. Uh, and uh, Hyundai says with the new 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, you should be able to do up to 221 miles of range. So that's actually a little bit more versus the EV6, which I think manages around 218 for the GT trim. You can thank, of course, credit that larger 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, which also has greater energy density. Uh, Hyundai says performance is going to be quite impressive. Zero to 60, they're estimating 3.25 seconds. It has a top speed of around 162 miles an hour. Uh, this vehicle is no longer recommended to tow. Obviously, you know, they had to get, get, give that up uh, versus the regular Ionic 5, which I think can do 2,300 pounds. But as this car sits, it weighs in at just over 4,800 pounds. It's about 100 pounds heavier versus the regular version of the Ionic 5, which honestly is not that much heavier considering all the extra stuff they give you. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Now, when I first saw the Ionic 5 uh, a couple of years ago, I really loved the design. I mean, this car has kind of like a retro modern design theme that reminds you a lot of, you know, like a hot hatch, for example, from the 80s. But for the N, as you can see, the company has really taken things up to the next level. This particular trim that I'm showing you, uh, it only comes one way, but it's in this nice white exterior color. All Ionic 5 Ns will essentially come with their uh, full LED headlights. So you have kind of like these cube style LEDs where you have an LED low and high beam, LED projectors as well, uh, LED daytime running lights and turn signals. There's also the new N logo here, which is now kind of like a flat design where it's metallic. And then you also have the new Hyundai badge here, which is also black accented and also like a flat design. The front fascia, as you can see, houses the camera for the front camera system. Uh, and then there's also some, you know, really nice accent LED lighting along with the kind of orange strip that goes across there and then down across the lower splitter. Unlike the regular Ionic 5, you also have some active grill shutters here, but much larger air intake openings that are functional, of course, with the front splitter. It just gives this thing more of a hot hatch look as opposed to the regular Ionic 5, which tries to look a little bit more like a crossover. Now, moving around to the side profile, you're gonna notice a couple of things. First of all, this vehicle has a very long wheelbase at 118.1 inches long. Uh, its width, however, has been increased by about two inches. It's around 76.4 inches. That's all kind of in the wheel wells. And the overall length is 185.6. So it's around 3.2 inches longer than the regular Ionic 5. And that's courtesy, again, of the front and rear bumpers, which are, you know, making the vehicle longer and wider as well from the fenders. You can see these wheels are uh, a 21 inch forged alloy wheel design wrapped in a 275 uh, by 35 R 
21 inch Pirelli P0 summer tire. It's a unique tire developed exclusively for this vehicle. You can see the brakes, massive. They are 15.3 inches in the front, uh, like I wanna say two inches larger than a regular Ionic 5. The road or the caliper, it's clamped down by a four piston red painted and branded caliper as well. Uh, you'll have a, a 14.2 inch rotor at the rear. All independent suspension, of course, along with an N tune specific sports suspension. You can see, unlike the Ionic 5, uh, the regular one, you have painted wheel arch trim along with the orange line that kind of goes across the side. You have the same kind of intersecting geometric lines going across the side profile, which looks really cool. You also have these black painted power side mirrors, which are power folding. They have the integrated camera and turn signal. Sadly, if you guys are looking for a Pano roof or a sunroof, Hyundai had to delete that for the Ionic 5N for structural rigidity. A lot of the chrome trim has been blacked out, of course. And then you can see uh, some of the air intake openings here. They are functional, which again helps with the cooling and kind of just helping with the airflow. Uh, and then over here is where you're gonna find the charge port door. So let's go ahead and open that up. You can see uh, it still has a power actuated door. And this vehicle runs on the 800 volt architecture because remember it's the eGMP architecture. Uh, so essentially what that means is you can, ex this thing will accept up to 235 kilowatts of max DC fast charging, allowing you to go from 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. So it's the same time as the smaller battery pack. And that's because this car will now basically allow you to charge at 235 for longer periods to help you again get to that you know 80 percent state of charge in the same time hyundai says it has an 11 kilowatt onboard charger so it'll take about seven hours on a level two 18 minutes on a level three 221 miles of range so again impressive uh, performance still among the best in the segment and it also has the v2l vehicle to load feature if you guys would like to do so as well you can see the spoiler back here is enlarged it also helps with aerodynamics and kind of helping to push the rear down hyundai also added a rear wiper back here which the 2024 model did not have. I think all the 25, 25 models have it. You can see you also have the new Hyundai logo here. It's got black accent badging for the Ionic 5. I love the pixels uh, for the full LED taillight design, which is mimic from the front. You have a much more aggressive rear diffuser back here along with the orange accents. Again, it just screams to me, hot hatch. I love the way this car looks, especially in white. There's also a Soltronic orange. And then back there, you can see there's the signature performance blue in a matte color. Uh, you have integrated parking sensors back here. Your camera is mounted here. And in terms of the cargo area, the Ionic 5N, again, is a very practical vehicle. So with the second row seats up, there's no third row, you get up to 26 uh, cubic feet of storage space, which is very, very usable. If you want to fold down the second row seats, that expands the cargo to around 60 cubic feet. That's practically identical to the regular Ionic 5, which again is very, very important for practicality speak. You can see there's a slight underfloor storage area here along with your tire mobility kit, uh, your level one mobile charger and whatnot. But overall, you know, when you look at this thing, it basically screams hot hatch and it has you know, similar amounts of cargo space as a traditional gas powered hot hatch. So let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of this 2025 Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Before you get inside, however, let me show you guys the key fob. You can see here is the new key fob that Hyundai recently introduced on the uh, Ioniq 6. Ignore the sticker that's over that. Um, there's actually an N badge on the back of this fob. Unlike the Ioniq 6, which had like a bright silver finish, this is nice and matte black. It has the usual buttons here for lock, unlock, remote start, uh, panic feature, and then you can also open the power lift gate from here. The cool thing about this egg-shaped key, when you turn it on its side, it reveals the Hyundai logo there. So again, very clever design. But if you don't want to use the key, Hyundai also offers their digital key 2.0 system where you can use your cell phone, your smartphone as a key, which is a great feature to have as well if you guys are an owner of the vehicle. Now you can see it still has those pop-out door handles here. If I lock the car, uh, the door handles will retract in. The mirrors will also electrically fold. Uh, the car also has a sensor. If I walked away and then walked toward it, the door handles would pop back out. But since I was standing too close. We'll just unlock it. You can see the door handles will pop out, the mirrors will unfold, and it allows you to essentially open up the door and check out the interior. Now, if you guys prefer lighter color interior, this is where sadly the Ionic 5N only offers a black interior with their performance blue contrast stitching. You can see it looks good with the white exterior color. It's just a little bit too dark for my taste, but you can see these are essentially the same N specific sport bucket seats from the uh, Elantra N. This N logo is illuminated. These seats are heavily bolstered they have a mixture of ultra suede along with the leather material. They are six-way manual adjust adjustment. So you do lose the power seats with memory function from the limited, but Hyundai still preserve the heat and ventilation function. So I love the fact that they're still ventilated, even though it's a, an ultra suede insert in the seat. You can see the door panel also uh, has some decent materials where it's got this soft touch injection molded plastic, faux a contrast performance blue stitching padded here where it still has the leather. It has kind of like a checkered flag design theme here in the uh, pixels along with this kind of interesting stone look texture 
to it. There's an ambient light strip behind here. Window controls are up one touch up down for the front, however, not for the rear. You have your power folding mirror controls. This is a silver, or I'm sorry, it's a dark gray plas uh, alloy look plastic accented door handle. You have hard touch plastic down here, a Bose premium sound system if you guys prefer to listen to music as opposed to the fake sounds the car creates. And you can see that like uh, pixel theme carries over in the checkered flag look on the actual alloy sport pedals, which all looks fantastic, which I think adds to the whole drama when you first open the door. Now, getting inside, you can see this definitely feels like it has a lower step-in position. And that's because Hyundai said that they actually lowered this, this actual sport seat uh, to again, create more of like a bucket, you know, race car-like feel. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember this is built off of the eGMP architecture. And then all Ionic 5 ends will essentially come with their dual display. So you have a 12.3 inch display here and a 12.3 inch display here. Your start, start, start stop button is located here. So turning the vehicle on, you can hear Ignore the tire pressure warning lights. This vehicle is being used for track driving today and they've had to replace the tires a few times, but you can see it creates that little fake sound, uh, which definitely gives you the sensation and feel that you're in like a internal combustion powered vehicle. Um, the steering wheel on this car also is unique to the N. You can see it's N specific with the N badge. I actually like how they put the N badge here as opposed to the Hyundai badge. Uh, the wheel itself has a thicker um, actual rim with contrasting stitching, perforated leather, uh, which is really nice. The seats are also, the steering wheel is also heated and it also adjusts in tilt and telescope. So it has a good amount of adjustability uh, and range. You also have paddles on the wheel, which we'll talk about that later on during the driving scene. And there's also lots of buttons, which we'll come back to. In terms of the rest of the dash, you can see it's got the same soft touch injection molded plastic with the silver or with the contrast blue stitching. There's also that performance blue line that kind of goes through there and adds a little bit of color, which is nice padded area over here. And then as you can see, I have it in the end mode right now, which allows you to kind of customize things. But I want to quickly show you guys one thing. And of course I hit the wrong button uh, because this car basically allows you to create like a little sound. First of all, it has shift. So if I hit that activate function, you can see it actually gives me a tack here. And if I push this button, it goes into sport and take a listen at this guys. <laughs> It actually will also do a rev limiter bounce, which is pretty darn cool. And there's also like an end mode here that basically allows you to kind of put it into the full on end race mode. And listen to that, it actually is creating a pop and a crackle. Now that's obviously being played through the internal speakers, but it also allows you to play it on the outside of the vehicle too. So it adds to that visceral, dra visceral drama. Hyundai says the they wanted the sound to be kind of like a two liter turbo engine with an eight speed dual clutch, which we'll talk about that later. You can also change the way the sound sounds by going into the evolution uh, disp or type. That says, evolutionary future sound of electric and there's also supersonic which supposedly sounds like a fighter jet so there's three different types i personally like the ignition <laughs> especially with the pops and the crackles that is just absolutely hilarious so love the fact that you know hyundai is doing something like that which i think just adds to the drama now coming back to the steering wheel i want to talk about a few buttons uh drive mode selector is here this controls um your adaptive cruise control along with the way the information display looks here this is for your audio information then you can see here this is your n performance button here so you can go into n standard or n custom where you can customize uh how you want the steering suspension the sound this button here goes into to uh, another end mode, which allows you to kind of control regen braking or control a launch control function. NGB is Ngrin boost. Uh, so this is the overboost function that essentially adds 40 horsepower for up to 10 seconds. You can basically push that allow it to you uh, play out for 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, you can re-push it again out on the street, which gives you again, an overboost function, which is fantastic. We'll try that out later on when we get this out on the road. Uh, you can see that in terms of the rest of the interior, however, Things are pretty similar. The one thing that I wish Hyundai would have added, however, is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It has uh, it has up it has those features, but you have to connect it via a USB-C dongle down here. I would have liked to see Hyundai just put their new software uh, that we've seen in other vehicles to kind of include the wireless CarPlay function and Android Auto. Uh, you also have you know a pretty easy to use 
interface, however, which is, you know, which is nice. It also has built-in GPS, which Hyundai's GPS isn't anything super fancy, but it gets the job done. Most of you will just use the CarPlay anyways. When I put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your full top-down 360 camera. It also will give you different views. It also will give you a 3D perimeter scan view. You can see it's got the performance blue on there and the graphics and resolution. Fantastic, reminds me a lot of some premium uh, expensive European cars because remember Hyundai's team essentially was poached from Germany, uh, which is why this car has so many like M things like from BMW's M division. Now you can see compared to the regular Ionic 5, this center console area has been completely redone. It is bespoke to the Ionic 5N. You can see there's a new wireless phone charging pad here that's raised up uh, to allow the phone to kind of sit on here very nicely. And it also does keep my phone charged. I actually had my phone sitting here when I was on the racetrack and it stayed in place which is fantastic. Um, you have your parking 360 control you know, button there. Uh, Hyundai also thought of the fact that if you have really tall or long legs, there's a nice padded area here for your knee. So if you guys are driving out on the track, you need to brace yourself, hold yourself in. It's nice and padded here and padded here on the passenger side. So I love this bespoke console. It doesn't slide forward and back, however, like in the Ionic 5, so you lose that, but you have another USB here, a 12 volt power outlet. You can see your cup holders are here. You can also kind of, um, retract them or have them pop out as well. Padded or slightly padded center console. I kind of wish this was softer. Open this up. You can see it has some, a little bit of storage in there, uh, which is nice. You have your dual zone climate control here. And then if you're trying to get to the heated and cooled seats, they're actually located in the screen. So if I push the climate bu button here, you can see there's your cooled seat function, your heated steering wheel function, your heated seat function. I would have preferred an actual hard button, but I love the fact that Hyundai kept the heated and ventilated seats. It's nice, especially at this price point. You don't get ventilated seats on the EV6 GT, even though you do get a variation of uh, this seat, which by the way, this seat is comfortable and it really holds you in place nicely. They aren't as hard to get in and out of as some other sports seats, but I say if you're a wider frame, this could be a little bit on the tight side, so kind of keep that in mind. If you guys don't like you know, seats that hug you, you can see, open that up. The glove compartment goes into the dash. It's damped, but not only with felt. It offers a pretty decent amount of storage. You have an auto dimming rear view mirror here. Uh, and then you can see you have touch controls for the uh, map lighting. No sunroof in this vehicle, but it does add a ton of headspace, which is good if you're planning to take it to the track. Uh, no heads up display, but overall the interior has some Really nice, unique touches to show that you bought an N. It has most of the tech that you want. I just wanted Hyundai to add wireless car plane and auto, which sadly they don't have. You have to connect it via the wired connection. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat area of this vehicle because I wanna show you guys what the space is like. Hit the unlock button there so the door handle pops out. You can see, open this up uh, and there's a pretty generous amount of legroom space, which by the way, these seats, they still allow you the ability to recline them and you can also fold them down. You can see that's where it had it reclined. That's with it more slightly upright. Material quality back here is the same as the front. You have a soft touch injection molded plastic with faux stitching, although it's not the contrast blue stitching like in the front. You have that down here along with that checkered flag pixel theme. Uh, same thing on the side sills. And then when you get back here, you can see this is essentially where I'd have the seat to drive. When I get back here, Shut the door, Hyundai says there's around 38 inches of leg, I'm sorry, 39.9 inches of legroom. So nearly 40 inches of legroom is among the best in the class. You can see with the seat in this position, I can easily get back here and cross my legs. Uh, the floor here is completely flat because this is a bespoke EV architecture. You have two USB-C charging ports. Your rear seat air vents are located here and on the B, B pillar over there. In terms of the headroom space, you can see tons of headroom as well because it's a hot hatch with a relatively tall roof. Um, there's also an armrest that folds down here, gives you two cup holders, which is nice. You can fit three people across. Uh, and if you guys, again, have your tall friends, you wanna use this as a family vehicle, this is among the most practical hot hatches out there because of the uh, space that it has in the back seat and in the trunk. So here we are finally behind the wheel of the hotly anticipated Hyundai Ioniq 5 N. Remember, this vehicle is the most powerful production Hyundai product ever produced with up to 641 horsepower and 545 pound-feet of torque. Technically, I've driven something like this from Kia in the EV6 GT, but Hyundai's N performance division really takes things to the next level with the Ionic 5 N. I have to say this car is a peculiar one because you know, I'm not entirely sure who the target audience is, but Hyundai was telling us that it's essentially designed to be, you know, an EV for an enthusiast who isn't quite sure that they want or even sure that an EV could um, replace their beloved internal combustion engine vehicles. So, you know, that's kind of the whole point of this Ionic 5N is to be 
a vehicle that really will shock you, will change your perspective on you know EV electric vehicles, performance electric vehicles. So, you know, in a world where everything is kind of going electric, I'm kind of all for it. So. The first thing I do want to test out is the 0 to 60 performance. Hyundai claims this model should get to 60 in 3.25 seconds. It has its own dedicated launch control function, and we'll get it out on the road and see if we can actually get that here uh, on these uh, local roads in California. So to activate the launch control, you actually have to put it into the end mode, which as you can hear, it also makes that custom fake sound. You want to make sure you turn off the E-Shift and then just activate the launch control here, uh, which you basically just turn on and then you basically floor the accelerator and the brake and let go of the throttle. <laughs> and we just got 3.13 seconds. Hyundai claims 3.1 or 3.25. We're on a level surface here, guys. <laughs> Listen to the sound this thing makes. Remember, it's making a fake sound that you can either turn on and off. You can actually go into a different sound profile if you'd like. It sounds like a Formula One car. It really is video game-like. And remember when Hyundai first revealed this car, they were saying that you can actually program it to create these shifts, but oh my God, that that is absolutely bonkers. Now that time beats out a Tesla Model 3 performance and a Model Y performance. It's quicker than a Ford Mustang Mach-E GT performance as well. And it really shows you that you can have some fun in these EVs. I'm here for it, guys. This is absolutely insane. <laughs> And uh, I think it, people, a lot of people are gonna be genuinely surprised when they first uh, get their hands on something like this. <laughs> now I actually just activated the NE shift and you, as you guys heard, this thing has paddles that allow you to basically simulate an eight speed dual clutch with a two liter turbo. Listen to that guys. Let's see if I can get it to go to first. Oh, it actually bangs off the rev limiter. <laughs> that is something new. That creates that visceral feel that is lacking from every other EV. <laughs> oh, how the hell does Hyundai do that? I mean, those, the performance division and they're doing some witchcraft magic here that <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love the way this thing sounds. It really does remind me of something like the Elantra N. I literally just hopped out of the new Hyundai Elantra N, got into this vehicle, and I'm just shocked. I'm genuinely surprised at how similar you know, the sound feels. Obviously this car feels way faster. I mean, you've got 600 horsepower essentially, 601 available all the time. There's also that NGS mode that basically gives you that extra uh, 40 horsepower for up to 10 seconds. And when you activate the launch control, which I had activated earlier, that automatically gives you the full 641 horsepower. But if you just push this button here, oh, 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 oh my God, this level of like G-force that I'm feeling, Reminds me a lot of what I felt in the uh, Porsche Taycan. I mean, obviously the Taycan is a lot more expensive, but there's something about this car that just feels so planted. It feels so precise. It feels super balanced. <laughs> now, obviously when you have the NE shift on, it's going to essentially make the car slower because it actually has to shift. There's also different sounds. I have, I've had it on ignition. There's also evolution, which tries to sound like a future, evolutionary future sound of electric. And there's also supersonic, which is supposed to sound like a fighter jet. You can actually still use the paddles to shift. <laughs> when you shift, it actually makes like a bang sound. That's different. Okay, that is definitely different, but I'm here for it. I think my favorite's probably going to be the ignition. 
But still, I love the fact that Hyundai kind of gives you these choices because I think that if you're going to do something like this, look at that, I went into first gear, which is still super weird to me. Let's see how it sounds in evolution if I start. Okay, that sounds like a motorcycle to me, actually. I like that, actually. That sounds like an electric race car slash motorcycle. But again, try out all the different sounds if you guys ever get a chance to test drive this vehicle. I personally like ignition still. <laughs> Now, because this is a very short drive, I'm actually gonna take this car out on a track on Laguna Seca uh, later on in this video. We're gonna see what it's actually like to drive because this is still like a 4,800 pound electric vehicle. Um, it's at 62% charge. I did that launch at 3.1 seconds with a 62% state of charge. It's showing 108 miles of range. Um, Hyundai says 221 on a full charge. I'll have to wait until I get one back home to actually test out the range and we'll do updated you know, driving when I have one for a full week to live with. But I have to say on the street, the ride quality of this vehicle is actually really nice. Like I'm sitting here, you know, I put it back into eco or we'll put it into normal mode here uh, and the dampers get a little bit softer. They are adaptive uh, and it just kind of glides over the road with the same kind of plantedness that you get from most EVs. The seats are also very comfortable and supportive. They hold me in place very, very nicely, which I love. Visibility is also great out of this thing. You can see out of the front, the side, out of the rear very nicely. And it's just a really easy car to drive. I mean, if you guys have driven the regular Ionic 5, the N, essentially, you can put it into its normal mode and it gives you that dual personality that you're looking for. It'll be quiet when you want it to. You can turn off all the fake sounds. It'll have a com more comfortable ride if you need it to. And I think that uh, most people are gonna be surprised. Most enthusiasts are gonna be surprised because what Hyundai has essentially built here is the first, really first electric hot hatch that has the mechanical, visceral, and just excitement that an enthusiast demands and expects. And I have to say, guys, I truly am shocked. This is most definitely one of my favorite driving EVs. I mean, the Taycan's my favorite driving, but this is almost at the same level, at least out in the street. So here we are back at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. The last time I was on this track, I was in an Acura TLX Type S probably like two or three years ago. And this is a very technical, very serious track. So to be driving around in, in a 4,800 pound electric crossover, I mean, it's been lowered, it's been widened, it's got these sticky 275 with Pirelli P0 summer tires. And we have a car that has 641 horsepower, up to 641 horsepower. Hyundai is kind of starting us out in its N-Logic drive mode. <laughs> and I'm very confused because I've only driven basically two EVs on a track. This car now, a Porsche Taycan Turbo GT with the Wyzak package, which is quite a high benchmark. And I think Kia had us drive the EV6 GT in Vegas as well on a track. But this car, I have to say, it's got the uh, sound on, and I just came back from the street drive. On the street, this car is absolutely insanely fast and capable. But here on this track, you really notice just what uh, this car can do. I mean. Pushing it around Laguna Seca here, the steering in this car offers a ton of uh, feedback. <laughs> There's the infamous corkscrew there where you literally fall and you don't really see where you're going, but I can feel the weight of this car shifting around a pretty good amount, but you know what? It's got a ton of precision and balance as well. <laughs> There's the, a little bit of a understeer there, but so much power and this car also has upgraded brakes, so you get to uh, put them to the test. There's a little bit of wheel spin. Put my foot down here to the floor. <laughs> oh my God, that's 110 almost there, but <laughs> you definitely get a sense that I'm sitting in a vehicle that's a lot taller than I am used to driving. The, the Taycan, which I mean, it's not really a fair comparison test. <laughs> There's the back trying to step out a little bit. There's a little bit of oversteer there. <laughs> this thing really shocks me because the regular Ionic 5, it's a, it's a good driving vehicle, electric vehicle, but the N definitely uh, takes it to the next level. I mean, I'm getting a sense of the 
There's still a feeling of weight in this car, that's for sure. It doesn't quite hide the weight as well as a Taycan does, but I mean, that car is a Porsche. What do you expect? Hard on the brakes here. Ooh, I'm starting to like, just get a little more confidence as I push this car a little more, but I love the tail out oversteer that this thing does. I mean, the rear electric motor produces way more, like a, a 300 and something horsepower from just the rear, 200 something in the front. <laughs> Unbelievable, this thing is so unbelievably quick. <laughs> We're coming up to the infamous corkscrew again. Again, I'm not really a race car driver, guys, but. <laughs> this track is such a crazy technical track. It's just weird to be doing it in something like this. <laughs> I mean, this is supposed to be a mom crossover, electric crossover, like a Model Y competitor, and Hyundai's end di performance division has transformed it into a hot hatch. I mean, it's still a heavy, somewhat big feeling hot hatch. <laughs> this thing is just insane how fast it is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Track capable EVs are still very much in their infancy, but uh, here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, the Ionic 5N really shows you what Hyundai can do, you know, with an EV when you really, you know, give it to people who are actually enthusiasts, who really want to tune a chassis. This thing does far more than just go fast in a straight line. It can actually take on corners, which is not something a lot of EVs can actually do, at least fast EVs. So it's kind of crazy to think that the Ionic 5 has been on sale in America for about two years now, and sales for this vehicle keep increasing every year. Hyundai essentially sold just under 34,000 units here in America in 2023. I expect them to continuously uh, increase that number, especially with the addition of this Ionic 5N, because the company, again, didn't really have any sales figure targets for you know this vehicle in terms of US production and whatnot. But after spending the day driving the Ionic 5N, I have to say, guys, I have driven a lot of fast EVs EVs. And again, they are all mostly quick in a straight line, especially if they have a performance badge in it. But this Ionic 5N really does take things to the next level. Because if you guys remember, one of my favorite driving EVs in terms of handling dynamics has always been the Porsche Taycan. But the problem with the Taycan is it's just bloody expensive, especially the new version. I had a chance to drive that in Spain uh, most recently. And this Ionic 5N, essentially what it does is it captures about 90% of the handling dynamics of that Taycan, but in a much more affordable package. It's amazing to me what the N team have done here in transforming the standard Hyundai Ionic 5, which is already a really nice driving vehicle, and essentially turning it into an electric hot hatch. As you guys saw on the street, you can easily do zero to 60 in 3.1 seconds. That is quicker versus the last Model 3 and Model Y performance. It's quicker than a Mach-E GT. It's quicker than an EV6 GT as well. Uh, and in terms of the handling out on WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, this thing is just absolutely insane. It just took the abuse lap after lap. It has the handling dynamics that make you feel like you're driving a smaller and lighter vehicle, even though you're still kind of sitting up high. Uh, and it just, you know, took everything that I threw at it and just begged for more. And while the electric sports sounds that you're hearing in this vehicle may sound gimmicky on paper, I have to admit, I loved driving it with those shift points turned on out on the track and on the street with the launch control on, of course, and just having it on in general without the shifts. It just creates a visceral drama that is missing from every other EV out there, including the Porsche Taycan. I mean, yes, the Taycan has some fake sounds, but Hyundai's end performance team has really outdone themselves. They've crafted an EV for enthusiasts, built by enthusiasts, and it really just transforms the game. And I wouldn't be surprised to see other manufacturers follow suit with Hyundai uh, because it essentially just gives you uh, that visceral feeling that's missing from a lot of EVs. In terms of the interior, I love the sport seats. I love the fact that they're still heated and ventilated. I do wish that they had added wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I think it's a little inexcusable that it doesn't have that feature but the back seat is still very usable. It's still very comfortable. It has a ton of space in the trunk as well. And really what Hyundai has done here is they've given you a lot of value because obviously if you want to get into a regular Ionic 5, they start in the $40,000 range. If you want the N, however, Hyundai just recently announced pricing that starts at around $66,100. That's before destination charge. Compared to a limited, it's around $8,500 more. It's around $5,000 more than an EV6 GT, around $7,000 more than like a Model 3 or Model Y performance for example, uh, my test car here with the white exterior color 
uh, and the destination charge, you're looking at just over 67 grand. I know 67 grand may sound like a lot of money, but again, it delivers almost 90% of the handling dynamics of a Taycan, but at a fraction of the price because the last Taycan Turbo GT that I drove was literally a quarter million dollars. And obviously you can't compare this to a Taycan, but what it essentially does is for a little bit more, you get a vehicle that is one of the best driving and handling EVs out there. And again, still one of the quickest as well. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2025 Hyundai Ioniq 5 n if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.